Hello there, this is Justin Croner with Gromark FS and the MyField Analytics team. Uh, this is It's the end of April right now and we finally got enough of a stretch of good weather here just to finish up a few uh, acres here of EC mapping for a customer. So uh, what we have here is we have a cornfield uh, that we're, uh, we pulled into. Uh, about 16 acres, not huge, that we're going to EC map today. Um, we have the machine here all set up. It's hooked to my truck here. Uh, wires and laptop and monitor in the cab. And we have the machine here. And basically what it does is it puts a low current of electricity through the ground. Walk around the back here, you can see some, some coulters there. And some of those coulters are transmitting uh, electric current and others are receiving that current and as I pass through the field it's going to be gauging the speed at which that current goes from one disc to the other so theory the heavier clay soils will have more moisture in it the current will come back faster and give us a higher EC reading for that field the sandier lighter soils have less moisture in there the current will come back to the receiving disc a little bit slower and give us a lower EC reading for that field, for that area of the field. And as it does that, it's going to take a reading every so many feet. When it takes a reading, it's going to record the GPS coordinates of that spot where it took the reading, the actual reading uh, down to a foot deep, a deeper reading down to three foot deep, and then the field elevation at that point. And it's going to record it all basically on a uh, spreadsheet which, when we get done here, we'll be able to look at the uh, actual screen and it'll show us the dots and some of the readings that we can use to make our zones. So, just a little walk around to the machine itself. There's the coulters, the wires. You can see here, not a huge amount of penetration that we need. We just need to get through some of that, that thicker uh, corn fodder here. Uh, we are turning up a little bit of soil here, so I know it's down there. You just want a couple inches deep. Um, here's the actual field now, laid out. It's got some dips, some valleys, some high points here. Um, around here a little bit. So we ought to see some different variation throughout the field itself as we go through here. Uh, it's only going to be able to, we only need to, according to the manual, do 30 to 75 foot swaths as we pass through here. So it shouldn't take a lot of time. Uh, a nice smooth field. Maybe about 10 miles an hour, so we'll see if that's the case here. But uh, I'll go ahead and map this out, and when we get done, we'll take a look at the results. Okay, we just finished up EC mapping this field that we just uh, were in here to begin with, and uh, this is what the actual display looks like. So the red areas indicate a low EC value, and the green areas represent a high EC value. And you can start to see zones shaping in the field like this. We won't see a complete zones. So I get it in a mapping software and, and combine some of those. Uh, but you can see uh, down here at this end, a lighter soil EC reading. The yellows are kind of in the middle. Some features through the field like this green area here, green area here, and a high EC area down at this end. So all that's stored in a spreadsheet format with GPS point, low, the shallow EC reading, which is a foot, deep EC reading which is down to three foot and the actual elevation. So just like every other field in western Pennsylvania this one has it's not a square shape kind of a triangular shape there. Uh, a lot of variation in the soils. This one ranged from a high EC reading of 31 down to a low EC reading of 2. If we turn around here and actually look at the field itself just like every other field in this area you know, we've got rolling hills, we've got a, a, a clump of trees here in the center, rock outcrop up there, kind of rolls around here, down to this end, down to the low spot down in this area here. So there's going to be a lot of soil variation here, and I'll show you more when we get it back in uh, the office there and, and load it all together in one map. Just wrapping up our discussion on EC mapping and the processing. Uh, here we're back in my office and uh, we're taking a look at the raw data that we, we uh, gathered from EC mapping on that field. And you can see here, if I lay it out in a spreadsheet format, what we've got is a, uh, a set of points basically. And every so many feet that machine recorded the GPS coordinates of that point, the shallow reading, which is uh, 0 to 12 inches deep, 
a uh, deep reading, which is 0 to 36 inches deep, and then the machine's actual elevation in the field. So that's the data that's being recorded as machine goes to the field. And if we process that, process that a little bit further, here on the left, we can see an interpolated map of those points put together, the red representing low EC values in that field, the darker green representing the high EC values in that field, and then some color ranges in between. Uh, and it's a little, mis it's, it's not to be conceived that the red area is, is bad soil, it's just the way that it's colored in this map, uh, just a lower reading. So there's low areas, low EC readings. In a wet year, they would drain a little bit better. Uh, they'd have uh, a little more sand content. But in a, in a dry year, that's where it would tend to dry out faster. Uh, vice versa with the uh, dark green high EC areas, you know, in a wet year, it's going to hold that moisture longer. But in a dry year, it's going to hold that moisture longer and uh, uh, maybe sustain those, those plants a little bit longer. So if we take that interpolated uh, map there and then we generate it into some zones. What we've done here is we've got on our left here, our low EC zone within that field or high EC zone and a uh, zone in the middle that is a medium EC zone and it was a little big. My target was around five acres for each of those zones so I split it into two separate zones. So we would go in there and soil sample each of those zones and effectively what we've got is we inside of that one field we have four separate smaller fields or sub or zones with similar soil textures that we're managing separately. So whether it be our planting, uh, our, our nutrient applications, uh, these different soil textures are going to handle those different aspects or variation variables differently than the other ones, and we're managing them separately. So that concludes uh, the process of the EC mapping. Uh, the next step here would be soil sampling and, and doing some application. Thank you.